Dodge waiting for it and a great entry kill Dupree with the AWP. They have to turn the corner. He's going to pick up one more kill. They need to stack up on him at some point and he's ready for it. Another one for Dupree. And now last one left. Zeus. Oh, no. Zipex versus two. Championship point for ends. 12 seconds to collect the bomb. We've got Alexi B by oil. And that's it. Hello and welcome to another FPS Friday edition of Esports in 30, the show where we take a deep dive into your favorite esports every day of the week. I'm Rosario Bruto and this right here is Eric El Buela. And today we are so excited to have you because we have a lot to talk about. This week's topic, Blast Pro Series Madrid, friends. So mm -hmm. I know you watched, I know it was hype. What were your feels? Amazing. It yeah. was such a pretty tournament. It's, it's such a highly produced production. Yeah. That entire like... Just the design is so cool. Everything. And it's like, yeah, the only downside is, again, it's a little bit less competitive uh, because of the best of ones and then best of threes. But mm. whatever. Mm. There's a lot of money on the line, so everybody wants to play as hard as they can. Yeah, and there's absolutely. a lot of crossovers between the regions, which is always mm, spicy uh, oh, CSGO. Yes. Super spice, including like their stage production as well. Always spice. We're actually setting up to welcome Launders in just a moment. But in case you didn't actually catch any of the action in Madrid, here's a quick look with the highlights. Exi's got 20 HP, but Device is now the last man standing. That's a massive frag. Eight seconds. The no scope almost. The fake plot. Alexi gets taken out by Device. Just do the job. It's all about buying time for Ariel. Here he comes. He's going to have three to split. There's one. The second as well. How much more damage can he find here? That's beautiful there. Now Device is in trouble. He's the only man left alive. And Ariel finished it off. Ooh, and he gets Kill Dream from out behind boxes. He has the bomb. Cannot afford to throw this over to the CTs on Cat. So he doubles back to plan. Golden's going to try to give suppressive fire. He peeks and sees the player long. Automatic walking around the smoke though. Oh, he misses the feet of Fox. This is the second shot. Third time's the charm. You tear us down. He knows there's still an offer in there, but it's the long player that he drops out first. Automatic putting in work. Now they don't because of the flashbang. They don't have the information, so they could, they could get pulled towards the people. It's making play back up the stairs. Somehow X7 doesn't catch the new excuse that around that position. Ali won't find an angle, oh, and he's going to get absolutely ripped to pieces by Dennis. He's been on fire the whole game, and now it's Alexi B versus Five. He needs an ace just to survive for one more round. Not looking very likely. Dennis says, but it's Cajun oh. for CT spawn alone. That was a jumping scout shot. Are you kidding? Muteris dies. Side, now just waiting for it, and a great entry kill Dupree with the AWP. They have to turn the corner. He's going to pick up one more kill. They need to stack up on him at some point, and he's ready for it. Another one for Dupree, and now last one. Left Zeus. Oh, no. He's gonna shut it down. Astralis looking for it. What's the timing on this for Edward? That is everything. This could just destroy the round for Astralis. He's gonna have trigger discipline. He gets one as Dupree turns. He follows it up. And Edward, the dagger, is gonna bring Navida 12 12. Unless they can take out Electronic. Then surely the numbers will be too great. Look at the transfer. That is everything it needed to be. The trade comes in. The bomb. Oh, Zipix can just hold it. But he doesn't realize. He doesn't realize. Sarge is in position. Ooh. Does he stick this? He's inside of the smoke. He's going to jump on it. Ball, Down yeah. to the two seconds. Two they can seconds. do nothing. Three players up. <laughs> and we have Muteris robbing away the round. Seven now with fewer opportunities to get the damage in before they arrive on the site. But they will run straight into Ariel's org. Oh my god. There is no way they can pass this position. Ariel denies everything with the quad kill. Swing from Zipex. Everything's turning around now. But the bomb's been dropped on shore. There are 34 seconds, so Alexi B, if he could buy some more time, that's one way to do it by massacring everyone. Zipex versus two. Championship point for ends. 12 seconds to collect the bomb. We've got Alexi B by oil. And that's it. Ends are your champions. Then 2-0 the Astralis in Madrid. You, you hear that, Eric? Oh, it sounds like it was too easy for Ants in Spain. Now joining us on the line to break it all down is a man who experienced Blast Pro Series Madrid for first hand. Launders, how are you? Doing well, Marissa. Long time coming. No kidding, friend. Uh, let's get right into it here because many writers and experts are saying that Astralis actually sacrificed their legacy at the altar of Blast. Um, I guess maybe there's a balance there needed between mm -hmm. rest and delivering on the competitive side. So what's your take on the notion that Astralis let their era, quote unquote, slip away without a fight? I don't think anybody would really believe that until other teams beat Astralis over and over again. 
So I think that um, there is maybe the thing where Blast shows up and then teams are dropping out of other events to go to Blast. And that might be a problem in the grander scope of things, mm. but it's, it's hard to blame Blast when it's the teams who get to choose what tournaments they go to. So if they have a lot of fun at Blast, they make money, it's a two day event, it's really easy for them to attend. Mm. And it's not surprising that they're gonna go and, and do those events. And because the calendar year is so packed in the first place, it's hard to have eight to 10 events and not contribute to the oversaturation. But Blast are not one of the worst tournaments in the circuit. People like Blast, your ship's always good. It always encourages and gets the top teams to play against each other. It's more of a question of format and stuff like that that, that people um, have concerns with. Uh, best of ones is kind of like an exhibition with mm -hmm. an only a best of three final, but not a real playoff stage either. Mm -hmm. And um, but but ultimately, it's it's legitimate. Um, it's top teams. It's and if uh, Astralis are taking breaks from other events and, and doing blasts and throwing those in there, those still counts and. Nobody, again, nobody's really going to believe that Astralis have been dethroned until yeah. they lose. So it doesn't okay. matter if they don't really go to events, unless it happens over an extended period of time, then you would have to have like an interim belt or something like that. Okay, I mean, I guess that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess it's just easy for us to maybe try to cast a shadow or blame on something in particular for why Astralis didn't actually achieve what we always think sure. they're going to achieve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but uh, it wasn't like it. W they uh, were absolutely just garbage. For no, that. of course <laughs> the not. Tournament. It they're still just, incredible. Yeah, just one of those things. Uh, let's move on to the easy for ends. Oh, sure. Because, uh, I mean, Ariel just went ham, mm -hmm. uh, won MVP. They broke Astralis insane nuke map streak at 31 wins a uh, very great way to bounce back after the very average performance that they had at star series so yeah. talk to us about um Astra uh, about astralis nearly record-breaking win streak mm. and how ens was able to overcome them uh, them on their signature nuke mm. yeah so it's pretty historic you have a win streak that's 31 wins long it's it's the longest in history it's on the same map that nip set the record on back in 2013 and you could say that 31 now is counts more than 31 then but at the same time they were the ones who kind of nip were the ones who trailblazed the meta they really invented the map in the first place so they had their mm -hmm. own difficulties it's kind of like the lebron versus um jordan kind of debate in the sense that it's yeah, hard to compare actually, eras yeah. Yeah, but uh, but for Astralis, they did something amazing. Now, to get stopped at 31 means they tied with NIP for longest streak, 31 wins on nuke, on LAN, and then and that's it. And ends for the one to take them down, uh, a team that is basically Moneyball. They're a, comprised of a bunch of players that, that individually don't have much stock. In fact, mm. it, uh, it's Alu who has, is the most famous Finnish player, but up until this point, never played on a Finnish team. Sunny is the next most popular Finnish player and he's not even on ENDS. And so for them to go from kind of nobody to getting top two at the major and now being consistently top five and then putting an end to the best team the, of all times win streak on Nuke is pretty amazing. I, I saw, I was in the elevator at Blast Madrid and I, I saw Get Right and I was like, Get Right, weren't you happy? That, uh, that 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 ends ended up beating Astralis. He's like, of course I was happy, bro, because <laughs> he he can't do anything about that streak now, right? So he was just mm -hmm. hoping that Astralis didn't top him there. Right, yeah, of course. I mean, there's so many young players here, and obviously you guys get a first-hand look at all of them. You get to know them as well. But how have you seen young players like Ents, like Ariel, uh, grow just over the course of the last few months in this major? There's just so many babies here. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy, and Ariel himself looks like a bouncer. He's kind of he's kind <laughs> of young, but he's got this he's got this kind of attitude about him. I guess they all do, where you can't really read what's going on. Mm. But it was funny before the event. He or after the event ended, he said he intended on getting the MVP, which is not <laughs> something you normally predict. You know, you want to win the event maybe, but you don't talk about like I'm going to be the best player in the whole event. The and confidence. he ended up mm -hmm. yeah. He he said he played 80 hours a week for the last two weeks before. Uh, Blast Madrid, so they're taking it seriously. Holy smokes. Yeah. I mean, okay, all right. W how far along do you think he is now from actually achieving that goal that you set for himself? <laughs> um, well, he got the MVP at Blast Madrid. To be the best player on Ents is a different feat because you have uh, someone like Sergey, who I always make the joke when I'm casting. He's 16 years old and he looks like he's 10. And I always make the joke that he's been drinking stem cells for 10 years. And that's how he looks so young. And that's why he, he appears to be so experienced in the server. But he's kind of, he's a prodigy. You know, he, he's going to be a player who they probably all look to to put up big numbers when it matters. He doesn't seem to get rocked when there's like uh, nervous or high pressure situations. So there's just, 
it's coming out that there's a lot of talent on the team and Ariel is just one part of the puzzle. So mm. I think what's most important is that they stay together because it doesn't feel like a trade would benefit them too much and they still have a long way to go with the five they have. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, let's move on to another team. The Giants uh, qualifies the local rep. A mm. blast from the past yeah. to see Fox and the Surfer again. Mm. Uh, despite getting only a single win under their belt, what do you think of our Portuguese reps and seeing Fox frogging, uh, fragging in the top level server again, or top level? Oh, again? yeah. So the last time we saw Fox play against good teams was back when he subbed in for SK almost two years ago. And then they got top four at that major on last minute notice. So it was like, after that, you'd think he'd be getting showered with offers, but it, it didn't happen. And he ended up playing with the Portuguese team, which is his native region. So I that project has been okay for them. Like they don't, Giants don't really win anything. Nobody knew what to expect for them coming into it. But um, to give you some context on, on Giants coming to blast, so they, it was part of the Iberian playthrough, which means they had to play against Movie Star Riders, which were the favorites, and then a few other uh, lesser kind of teams that play in their own Orange Liga Super League um, that determines who's the best player in the Iberian region. And uh, Giants were able to do the best in that league, but overall were much less, uh, less good than uh, Movie Star Riders on an international level. Mm. When we, we went from Blast Copenhagen back in like uh, October, to having 12,000 people in the audience, to going to uh, Blast Lisbon in December. And Blast Lisbon, they had no idea what the ticket sales would be because they didn't know how popular Counter-Strike was in Portugal. The two teams there weren't very good. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, they, they expected to sell like two, 3,000 tickets. They ended up selling 6,000 tickets. Whoa. It, it, and Whoa. the crowd, the 6,000 person crowd, and I can quote the Danish people that were working there said that they were louder than they were in Copenhagen. And then uh, after that, we're like, wow, Portugal, that's got to be a stop next year as well, because that was okay. that was awesome. Yeah. And then we went to um, we did Blast Sao Paulo and then that was even louder and a little bit bigger. And then we came back to Madrid and the audience is actually only like two, three thousand people It's much more popular, apparently, in Portugal than it is in Spain, even though they're so close together. Right. Yeah. But it was so it was so amazing. The fans were so amazing in Portugal that Fox actually got every, all of his fans from Portugal to get on buses and come to Madrid come and on. then get in the audience. <laughs> they brought instruments, they brought flares, they were singing, <laughs> they were chanting, and they all had jerseys. Oh, and they wow. were there for the Iberian playthrough. It was amazing. I love that. I mean, there's something to be said about Portuguese fans, though, in general. Like, mm -hmm. even in Brazil, like, those fans are incredible. Definitely top tier, best fans in the world. I don't think that can be contested. Mm -mm anywhere. Um, I do want to move on here and talk about NIP um, because I just, I'm just i just wondering if Get Right and Forest continue this form, how far can it actually take Ninjas in Pajamas? Like, Do they have what it takes to actually win a significant title right now? You know that Michael Jordan meme where he's like grasping his chest and he's got like that pain. He's like he's got that pain in his head. That's cool. Like that's how Get Right is every time they lose. Like he is, he experiences like very visceral visceral reaction. I feel like nobody else gets, um, and it hurts him so bad to lose. But after, I I always wonder with old players like, mm. how do you stay motivated yeah. after you've already won everything? You've been the best player of the year. You've been the best player in the world. People call you the best player of all time. You've mm. had an entire era. NIP. He's already done that in, in Counter-Strike as well as CSGO specifically. You know, it, I, I can imagine at that age, when you're comparing to somebody like Rez, who's maybe as good as Get Right or, or, or uh, Forest uh, was years ago, how, how do you stay as motivated when Rez has so much more he can go to achieve? I mean, if NIP win another major, yeah, that would be amazing. But that's such a big grind, and, and Forest and Get Right already have multiple. So it's 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 something I wonder for sure. But hmm. at, least, at least Forest has been so consistent as the kind of oldest best player right now like i think mm. he's he's either he's either 29 30 or 31 in one of those one of those years he, he's and up there but but still young by comparison to many people that work in esports <laughs> that's true yes and one day he could become a commentator um or do jobs that are a lot less stressful i think <laughs> Comedy is stressful, Anders. Do you it, not feel stressed? Is. I mean, you always look cool and comfortable up there. Like, nothing's phasing you. But, like, there must be moments where you're like, oh, my God, this crowd is insane. How do You have to compose yourself. Yeah, uh, when I was at Blast Copenhagen, so they had live pyrotechnics. And I was standing up at the top of the stage with Connor. Yeah. And we didn't have, nobody told us that this was going to happen. But every time the bomb blew off, like, 
fire went up behind us. <laughs> and so we're like round five and I didn't even know this was going to happen. And suddenly like I had a bald fade and suddenly like the back of my head was just on fire. Like it was just hot. <laughs> I was, whoa. I was like dodging in real life. And, uh, and, and there was 12,000 people in front of us cheering. Like that was mental. Right. I did get a little rocked. I thought I was going to be nervous at all, but it's true. Hard for us to <laughs> it's hard for them too. Like, take it, take it, man. Yeah. <clears throat> sorry. You got um, a little cracking in there. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, let's move on to Navi. Uh, Simple was great, but not. Well, he wasn't really his usual like, self. Tough, like, tough. like he wasn't carrying uh, as hard as he yeah. usually do. Yeah, yeah. As hard as he usually does. Uh, so, where do you think Navi is heading towards the last few rounds of uh, the tournaments before the summer break? I. I don't. I all. I even. I think at Blast. Um, Blast Madrid. I had them top two. I thought they'd be in the finals over Ents, and Ents would be mm. maybe third. So I, because at, at Star Series, everybody was good. Zeus was good, mm. and like no offense to Zeus, but Zeus isn't always good. <laughs> so I, I was. I, I was surprised. We were all surprised, and we thought, all right, well, this is going to be a new Navi. Um, he came to play, but ultimately, he. You know. He, Marissa, you guys know, like if you if there's a star player on a team and there's a player who's not a star on the team, there's only so much you can expect. Like we just mm -hmm. saw a basketball game where Lowry was the only player who scored in yeah. the fourth yeah. quarter. The and only player. And then Danny player. Green just messed it all up for everyone. <laughs> Danny Green was that standing there looking pretty, you know, but it wasn't enough. Um, and that's kind of what it is with Zeus too. Like there's a certain level you can expect for him, but it's not gonna it's not going to break past that, at least not consistently. Right. So I I don't know what Navi will do, but mm. he's so, Simple's so entrenched in Navi. Like his yeah. brother works for Navi. Like his family has jobs working for Navi. Um, it, it feels very, it, it feels, it, it'd be weird if there was a roster change. And there, while there are other IGLs, I don't even know if there's like an IGL that would necessarily be better than Zeus, but he's certainly the liability, I feel like, on the mm. team. Um, some of the other performances are okay. It's but Simple, Electronic, and without those guys, they wouldn't be a top five team. No, I mean, and, and that's hard, you know, when you can't really, it's a team game. You don't want to put yeah. so much emphasis on the individuals, even though you need them to be there too. Yeah, of course. I guess you can compare it to baseball in a way. Like it's a team sport, yeah. but you got to depend on your individual performances. Um, I love all the, the sports analogies that are happening today with you, Launders, that's for sure. <laughs> I want to move on to uh, Cloud9 with Cajun B and Vice, because these are new players in Golden System. Automatic mm -hmm. playing insane despite the bad results. So how are the new players actually slotting into Cloud9, and what's the future of this team given those moves? Man, I, I don't know what to what to say with Cloud9. Mm. I, I know they have a lot of money. That's that's good. That solves problems. <laughs> that's you know, that step actually, number one. There's no salary cap to keep up with the sports analogies. Uh, so if they, if they can afford it, they can get a player they want. There's just not a lot of free agents that might be tantalizing opportunities, but they're taking risks on players like Vice and Cajun B, mm. who could very easily end up teamless and not on another team, even though they're super good. Um, for a tenured team like Cloud9, you think they're going to pick players who are both promising but also have a lot of good results. Like they did have Flusha, you know, three-time major winner, um, but he wants to take a break. So I, I don't know how confident they feel in keeping up with each other. Like there was a thing at, at Blast where every single Blast for the last six months, Cloud9 had a roster change. Mm. So for me to talk about Vice and Cajun as if they're going to be permanent fixtures. Like, I have no idea. They're probably scared themselves. I, I don't think anybody's safe on Cloud9 right now. Wow. wow Maybe they haven't yeah. found that fit. Yeah, that's tough. Um, mm. Let's move on to a map, Vertigo, uh, and its place oh, in the pool. Only place we saw it was in the play-ins between the movie star and Giants. Mm -hmm. Nobody seems to want to really play it. Uh, <laughs> what is Vertigo's current place in the map pool, and why are so, many few why are so few teams mm -hmm. willing to play it right now? I... I think so few teams are willing to play it because I think on like like if you take like Rainbow Six, there's so many maps in the pool, um, and those are established. But in Counter Strike, it's like literally seven, and we replace one at a time. And like Mirage has been in the pool since 2013, like since the beginning of the game. It's the same map, and so I feel like people are very drilled and experienced on, on the other parts of the map pool. And with the map, a new map, you really don't want to be the first one to make all the mistakes. And I think even if you theory strike in the server and you practice their routine and you come up with the best, coolest strats that don't necessarily work. So I think for some, they think, all right, it's better to watch and learn first and then adapt it later. Yeah. And also, it makes less sense for a new team 
to take on a brand new map as opposed to drill the core maps because a lot of because that that map could just be banned and then it would be a waste of time so you might as well have like a you know mirage inferno dust 2 mm. and then if you get that if you get good on those and you have a vertigo so that strengthens your map pool but it's like a later concern so a lot of the older teams will actually uh, adopt it first and um it is always a good idea if you have the time to to grab it like we did see giants movie stars play it but i don't even think they like the map either even though they played it <laughs> right now there's this meta where everybody is like running up the a ramp and I, i've never like uh, there so in counter like counter you have not like almost 120 bullets in most of your guns and you never have to think about your ammo. You use your, your mag of 30, your, your second mag, maybe a third, maybe. On Vertigo, with these A retakes, people are spamming for like the entire round. There's We've seen multiple rounds so far, people are down to their last 30 bullets, which never happens. And it, it's just loud. It's just, it's just so much noise. People are spamming, there's a smoke down, they're shooting through it. People are pushing up, throwing nades. It, it honestly doesn't feel as tactical as it should. Yeah. And I think that's that's what's bothering people the most. I mean, then it must also bother you guys at the desk too. Um, just yeah, you're analyzing for sure. But even Scrawny, like calling it, like it's got to be frustrating for you guys just to analyze. It is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we gotta we gotta make it seem like it's tactical. <laughs> you know? We gotta we do our best. I'll tell you that much. But I I think it, it's hard to make stuff up. Um, on on that map sometimes especially especially on a so they, they they'll probably rework the map yeah. um there it, there's been examples of it i think for a while valve have actually been really good at introducing new maps where if overpass it's not even the same overpass as when it first came out like the a side the b side mid everything was completely different so there's nothing stopping valve from totally changing vertigo um making it basically a brand new map over time and i expect that to happen I mean, you're saying that uh, you think the older teams are going to be the teams to actually figure out the map before the rest. But is there going to be a scenario where we'll, we'll see like an Astralis nuke uh, situation and they'll just figure it out first? There's a there is a curse with new maps as well, where every team that practices it and picks it ends up losing. <laughs> so uh, there's like famously uh, one of Stanislaus teams. I think it was Optic, like an MLG minor, like a few years ago, where uh, new new nuke had come out, so it was a new iteration of Nuke. Map got a facelift and everything, and he had never played the new Nuke um, mm. for like the month that it had been out, and it got picked because it was the best of five final. And they w ended up winning the ma the final on that map, even though they had never played it. So it was like Mouseforth picked into them, and they knew the map really well, but because there's so many question marks about where the meta's actually gonna go, nobody knows if they're playing it the best. And if you're too rigid, you can you can have way too many tells. Whereas, it's like it's like the old analogy about like fighting somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, where mm -hmm. you might you might have to be more worried about that guy than the guy who's like really Definitely. well trained. Yeah, exactly. How how do you yeah. counter when you don't know his next move? He doesn't even know. Well, yeah, that's that's yeah. The, that's the main that's thing. That's the one. Yeah, that's <laughs> one. Yeah. Speaking of moves, not related to the Blast Pro series, oh. uh, there was a. Pretty big roster news, a CS legend coming back from inactivity to replace Adren Neo to face Clan. Um, so, like, what do you think will his uh, addition as an I IGL uh, add to the face Clan moving into the future? Yeah, so Neo and Forrest are the two players that have arguments for best Counter-Strike player of all time, mm -hmm. like, in terms wow. of acc accolades, uh, in terms of consistency over years. Like, Neo was, like, simple in 1.6 for, like, four years. So, you know, he, he is he is he's very, very experienced, and I think the misconception about Virtus Pro is that they're a, a crazy team that will just rush and, like, bully their way into sites and stuff like that, but they're actually one of the most tactical teams like i've made videos about some of their tactics and they basically are just like organized chaos i feel like they they know they're a very aggressive team but they have um, a lot of depth to their strategy and i think if neo had a part to do with a lot of those um a lot of those strats then he'll bring a lot into phase as well but the question still stands and the same one for forest is will he at at I don't want to say with his age, but with the amount of experience and accomplishments, be able to keep up some a certain level of motivation, mm -hmm. or does he have the discipline to make sure that he's in this kind of last leg of his career, going to make sure to take it over the line every single day? Because FaZe are supposed to be a top one team. They're supposed to be the best team in the world. Yeah. They have so much talent. No, I agree. Um, listen, friend, you have a lot of talent, too. Okay, Launders, <laughs> thank, you so, thank much, you so yeah. much for your insight today. It's always amazing chatting CS with you. Uh, we'll have to have you back on real soon.
Okay, thanks for having me, guys. Take care. Always blessed to talk to a fellow Canuck, especially a talented one like mm -hmm. Lunders. Dang, is he good. Uh, Zurich, we need to close up the show as always with a little look ahead to what else is happening in the FPS world, not only this next weekend, but future and beyond. And of course, I'm referring to this whole CWL, whole COD franchising situation. That is definitely going down. Yep. And the fact that Optic may be actually purchased I, I, by, immortals. It's, by immortals like it's so strange to me to still think about and know that this is a reality yeah i mean it's ve it's a very interesting scenario especially mm. leading up to the franchising because i mean yeah the cwl optic is like you know a, a very established yeah. team um we'll have to see what uh, immortals is gonna want to do with that maybe they're gonna have like kind of the, an MIBR situation where they keep the name but like keep it as a COD console right, team. Right. Um, even in the Overwatch League 2, they both have um, spots as well. So does that mean, uh, I mean, obviously Immortals can't have two slots, so they yeah. might have to sell the secondary one to another org, which again, we'll have to see who is gonna end up bidding for that. So yeah. very interesting news, a lot of money people talking about money things and... But but here's a here's an alternate scenario because mm -hmm. yes there is this is just me speculating of course but yes there is uh, only one spot for one org uh, on the CWL for sure, yep. but when franchising takes place, you don't actually we don't actually know if the rules could change in any way, or if like one org or one city itself could actually have like a city. This city has Optic, this city has Immortals, like their specific teams, mm -hmm. even though they're owned under the same company. Yeah, the same right. Umbrella. Could they not still be spread out and just belong to different cities? I mean, that's yeah. a possibility. Yeah, I'm not sure what the rules are like pertaining that, but I'm sure that that is that is definitely a possibility that they could do. It'd be sick. Like I would think yeah. that it'd be nice to have like t like a bunch of different things. It it's a little unfair though to have two teams from one well, it's giant. Well, it's org. unfair to like the executives for sure. Like, cause more executives want to get in and purchase these orgs to get in. I, I obviously money talks, and I know we discuss this a lot on Unmuted. Money is always king. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it just depends on who's lining whose pockets at the end of the day. Let's yeah. talk about Rainbow Six mm -hmm. because there are some things happening, and you. Yep definitely picked up a lot more Rainbow Six lately. You've been crushing it. Yeah, yeah. I've been picking up the uh, with the new patch. So there's like kind of like a newcomer mode. Mm. Um, it kind of just like puts you in a with a bunch of newer players, mm. which is really cool. But uh, the major starts tomorrow uh, for the Pro League, which mm -hmm. is going to be amazing to watch. Uh, yeah. I think they disabled one of the characters, Clash, because there was some exploits regarding him. I know IQ also has some sort of exploit that, mm. but she is still in the game. Like mm. you can still play her, but Clash. No, but they also announced two new operatives, Ooh. Warden and Nock. And uh, Warden looks like James Bond. He looks sick. Okay. He has like a little um, like gadgets and his um, his sunglasses make it so that he can't get flashed. Oh. Yeah, it's it's very cool. And then Nock is a stealth character that is very stealthy, kind of like the Sombra of uh, R6. So oh, very stealth, invisible. Like I think it looks like it. We haven't had the full release yet. Uh, they said they're gonna release it, like moving on to the to the pro league during the pro league. Okay. So I'm super excited to see what they're gonna add because uh, an invisible character is is would be kind of OP in R6, but we'll see. Cause, so crazy. In R6, yeah, because there's yeah. so many counters in that game. There's so many operatives now. Like yeah, there's yeah. so many from I know. the last time I played. Just to keep track of. Yeah, but it should shape up to be a lovely weekend yes. of Rainbow Six. Very if exciting. you're interested, you should definitely tune in. I do want to talk before we go about COD again mm -hmm. because uh, there's a there's a mobile release. That's right. <laughs> it's right up your genre. You're the mobile expert of the studio. No, I don't think I want to be. <laughs> e I don't think I want to be labeled as that. Too late. And I it's too late. It's too late. I'm just not sure. I, obviously, there's a bunch of COD Bros just trashing it because that's what COD Bros do mm -hmm. uh, on Twitter. But, I mean, it looks like that it might be good. This seems like a good variety of maps. And, yeah, you know, you're missing the actual tactile feedback of controller because um, I feel like you need that with yep. games like this. And they do make it a little bit easier for people from the outside, like people that don't usually play these games on console. Mm -hmm. it, it is a nice little gateway in. Yep. So I, it's got to be good for the world of Call of Duty. Like, why not? They're oh, yeah, absolutely. For money. So the, uh, the main thing that I kind of see with this entire kind of uh, switch in the console that they're uh, playing the game is 
there's so many more people that have phones, right? Like yeah. Diablo, like everybody has phones, right? You guys have phones, right? Okay. So I think in a, uh, uh, especially in the Asian market, yes. it is super big. So like PUBG Mobile is really big. Uh, Ring of Elysium is really big. You, yes. Like a lot of games that you can play on your mobile mm. is very mm. big in Asia. So that might be the market that they're trying to uh, tap, which is obviously in terms of like the COD, they've never had Reduces anything tap. like that. Yeah, so I mean, tap, right? <laughs> it's 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 a mobile it game. Just like it relates, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna be hitting my mobile games all weekend that are not COD related. I think you know what they are. Yeah. We've discussed them several times. Listen, yep. we gotta go. That's it for F F F FPS Friday. Hi, uh, it's it for me because it's Friday too. We gotta hit them drinks. Reminder, we are off Monday, so it's because it's a holiday in Canada, so no stream then, but we'll be back Refresh on Tuesday with Matt, Lisa, and Hysterics talking LOL. League of Legends mid-season. We got that. Catch us on all our socials at Squad State, and we'll see you later.